Coming to you live from Memphis, Tennessee, home of the blues and birthplace of rock and roll. It's Memphis Entertainment Weekly with T.J. Cates. Hi, I'm Jeff Yarbrough. I'm your guest host today for Memphis Entertainment Weekly, and we are privileged and we're thrilled to death to be able to catch up with a real live movie crew. Here I'm speaking with Mr. Taylor Williams. Hi, how you doing? <laughs> and uh, we're up here in uh, some sleepy little towns, uh, mainly what? Um, mainly in and around Crockett County, uh, Murray City, here in Green Frog, Friendship, a um, little bit in Ripley. In Ripley, Tennessee, as well. Yeah, we did I one didn't location know. in Ripley, one location there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we have about how many people do you have with your crew traveling? We have about 50 to 60 people, depending on the day. We've had a uh, 23 shoot day, uh, shoot days over about six weeks, and uh, uh, anywhere between 10 and 25 background performers and five to 10 principals. That's cool. And the name of the film is going to be? It is Brave New Jersey, which is uh, taken from the, I don't know if you remember the book from high school, Brave New World, sort of a futuristic Big Brother type thing. And, and our movie is set in New Jersey, so we, um, we spun it into Brave New Jersey. <laughs> That's cool. So tell us a little bit about what the story is, is, consists of. Sure. This, uh, it takes place over the course of one night, and that was October 30th, 1938 in uh, a fictional town of Lullaby, New Jersey, and it's based on the uh, real um, radio broadcast, the Orson Welles um, radio broadcast of the War of the Worlds. And um, uh, what happened was there were certain towns that uh, heard the broadcast and actually thought that the alien invasion, which was fictionalized in that broadcast, was real. And so they, a lot of them, got their shotguns and their shovels, and they got ready to defend their towns against the alien invasion, which of course never came. Yeah. So this, this movie takes place over the course of that night into the next day. I see. What, uh, where do you, let's just jump ahead for a minute, where do you plan to go with this film? Well, we're going to be doing post-production in Los Angeles throughout the summer, and then hopefully be, the plan is to be finished around October to be able to start applying to festivals. Um, Sundance is the first one in January, and uh, so we don't have distribution at this point, and so we'll take it to those, those festival markets and try to find distribution from there. Sounds great, sounds great. Sounds very promising, a good storyline. Uh, let's back up just a minute, let's talk about you for just a second, because you've got a, a major part to play in this, um, and let's go back to the question, why why here? I mean, you're from L.A., correct? Right. And you've got a lot of people here from New York as well, as I understand. Mm -hmm. Why this little area? Well, my, um, my grandparents are from here. My mother uh, was born and raised in um, right around Murray City and went to Alamo High School, which is right around the corner. And so I grew up coming here as a kid and visiting my grandparents and I always loved it. I, I just always have, you know, I've had many fond summers and memories of coming here and, and just always thought it was a great place with great people. And when this project came up, I've um, been developing it with uh, a long time friend of mine and it was a very special personal project and it fit. And we were able to find in Murray City a town that we could bring back to 1938 fairly simply. Um, and then be able to find additional locations around here that, that could work really well for, for the movie. So it was a good marriage of uh, a, a personal place for me and a connection to um, a place and people that I knew would embrace us and, and allow us to come in and do this. But also it benefited the movie because it, all of the locations have just been, we couldn't have found better places had there been no connection. Right, because we're sitting in a, a actual old-timey barn, which yeah. is, would have been pretty much the, yeah. the state of the art back then. Right, and it would have cost us probably $30,000 to build this, but here it is. <laughs> just sitting here waiting for right. you. Just begging to get a camera on it. So how has the community reacted to what you're doing? Right, it's, it's, been, it's been incredible. It's been better than I had hoped it would be. There have been 
so many people who have uh, heard about what we're doing and come out and wanting to find ways to help us. People who have offered their their homes and their equipment and uh, such to to do whatever we wanted to do. When we were in Murray City the other night and shooting, there were 60 or 70 people just watching, you know, and, and it was just, it's just a fun, different thing for people to, to just come out and embrace and, and have fun with. And so it's been, it's been really, really great. What about some of the challenges that you've had to deal with uh, as opposed to living in Los Angeles where, you know, grips and gaffers are, are everywhere and, and equipment is, is right there? What, what are, have you had some challenges here to deal with? Like stuff like that? Um, certainly, and there always are challenges, obviously, no matter where you are. But um, uh, luckily, we're relatively close to Nashville and, and Memphis, and so we're able to get um, certain crew members and certain pieces of equipment from there. But um, weather has been a little bit of a chore. Um, shooting at night is always difficult just because it's human nature to want to go to sleep. And so it's been a bit of a grind. But um, we've this just got this amazing crew and everybody has just been doing so much more than was expected of them and has just really embraced the spirit of what this thing is and and it's been tremendous so you've got a certain amount of people from different places where's everybody from most of the people well most of the the uh department heads are from los angeles there are a few from new york and then a lot of the crews from nashville um some of the crew are from uh some are from memphis some are a few from around here um we tried to hire as many uh, Tennessee locals as we could, um, because that was part of part of what I wanted to do coming here was to to try to make a positive impact on the community, and we wanted to hire as many people as we could locally. Of course, you can't hire everybody locally, but um, we were able to do a pretty good job, I think. Um, but yeah, it's Nashville, uh, Los Angeles, New York, mostly. That's cool. So you're all about challenges. I think the last <laughs> film that I saw that you had worked on was out in the desert. Um, what <laughs> was that? Some challenges to deal with with yeah. some of that. That was that that was that was unique. Also, um, yeah, that was that was in 2013. We shot that, and that was in Death Valley, and uh, we got the two inches of rain that they get annually one night <laughs> which was which was pretty special but um that's a beautiful place and and uh it's an easy place to photograph so that was a that was a neat one but very hot <laughs> yeah very hot <laughs> so this is we're here on the last day is that correct right we're finishing up tonight we uh the storm has passed the lightning is gone and i think that we're into our second or third setup of the night and we'll be going through till the morning but then we'll We'll have it done and we'll be ready to move to post. What does the future hold for you? After this goes into post-production, you've got a chance to take a breath and sit back and relax and say, this is in the can, it's in post-production. What does the future hold for you? What are you looking for for the future? Well, um, the the immediate future, like you said, is, is definitely focused mostly on post-production, but um, I have identical twin boys that are 10 month old, so that's gonna carry me definitely through the rest of the year and be focusing on them and my two older girls. Um, I'm gonna definitely be spending a lot of time with them, but um, I have uh, been working on a script of my own and um, I did a short film last year that I wrote, and so next year I'll be producing this feature length uh, script that I wrote also. So that's, that'll be next. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Taylor Williams, for meeting with us. Uh, Memphis Entertainment Weekly. My name is Jeff Yarbrough, your guest host for the evening. Be sure and watch for Brave New Jersey coming out very soon. So thank you very much. Ooh, la, 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 la. Let's go.